Daniel Jacobs is an excellent middleweight prize fighter. Little better than Austin Trout was at his best, in my opinion. Maybe even better than a primary is Landy Lara, though Lara and Trout at 154 are a little smaller than Jacobs. Triple G is probably a little better than all of them, and he's a big middleweight. Golovkin isn't just very good or even excellent. He's great. Very few junior middleweights who ever lived could get through five fights with those four fighters without a loss. Canelo Alvarez, though, is one of them. Yes, I'm well aware that Canelo Trout could have gone either way and that at least as many people think Lara deserved the nod as believe Canelo did. And yes, Canelo was lucky to get a draw in his first fight with Triple G, and the second fight was also close. Truth is, he didn't beat Jacobs by all that much. So sure, he certainly seems to get the benefit of the doubt from the judges. But you know what? I thought he beat Trout and Jacobs, close. Yes, I thought he beat Lara too. Thought if anyone deserved the decision in the Triple G rematch, it was Canelo. I ain't playing favorites. I agree he lost the first Triple G fight and got practically shut out by Floyd Mayweather the night one judge had it a draw laughably. But that's how it usually works with the network's house fighter, with the promoter's cash cow, with the A-side, with the golden boy. The deck is usually stacked in his favor. Canelo is the golden boy first because he can fight his ever-loving ass off. When he was a teenager, he was a YouTube sensation playing to packed houses in Mexico there to watch him beat up grown men. Now, over a decade later, he's outboxing the rangiest and cagiest and outfighting the roughest and toughest in the whole wide world. Canelo was the golden boy second because as a top fighter of Mexican heritage, he has a built-in following. There is no larger nor more rabid fan base in the world. Thirdly, he's good looking, which plays to Madison Avenue, see his Under Armour endorsement deal. And with the red hair, he's got an unusual look, an Irish looking Mexican prize fighter. Canelo's promoter, Golden Boy, is so named because the boss is the Golden Boy himself, Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya's appeal was based on his excellence, of course, he brought home the Olympic gold medal after all, but also the fact that he was good looking and of Mexican heritage. Oscar was Mexican American. And because of that, and because he was a pretty boy, he had some proving to do before he was accepted by the Mexican fight crowd. I mean, if you're so tough and willing to show it, which you better be in order to win over hardcore fight fans, why are your facial features still where they're supposed to be? Canelo's tough and willing to show it and is not apologizing for the fact that he has those kind of James Tony level skills to hit you more than you can hit him. Cat slip, slippery, slip punches and counter guy. There have been great Mexican fighters who were also big draws like Julio Cesar Chavez and Marco Antonio Barrera. But until now, there hasn't been a genuine Mexican golden boy, the glamour fighter with crossover appeal and the biggest boxing star outside maybe of heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua in the world.